What's up everybody? <laughs> Welcome to round number three of the Prague Special Championship. Um, I'm David Hofmann, joined by Lydia Homba. Hi! Um, we are not brother and sister, her last name <laughs> is a bit different, even though that mistake is uh, being made very often. Yeah, so very we're going often. to round three now. We have uh, Ryan Mohaus against Thomas Jews. And if I'm not mistaken, they both have a good chance for top 16. Um, I think Thomas is in top 16 and Thomas Ryan is in almost 16, not, yeah. something like that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't have the... Uh, he's current. kind of on the line, always in mm. and out and in and out. Yeah, there are these tiers, like some people yeah. are fighting for top 4, some people are in top 16 kind of safe, and then some people are fighting to get into top 16. Um, we don't know which decks they play yet, but um, uh, we will we, find we'll out We'll just get the deck list. Yeah, here are the deck lists. Um, let's see. Ryan plays Boothful, uh, Lycan Rock. Oh, and it looks like we are s going to see uh, Zorok Goliath support again. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but his list looks a bit interesting. We will talk about this later. Um, so we can change into the game now, I think. Um, they didn't start yet. And we have a ticker on the bottom. So if you know someone who is, um, who is playing in the tournament, on the bottom you can check how they're doing. Uh, we try to include as many players as possible. Um, yeah, but we don't know which deck they play, so we can show you this. So, Ryan goes first. He did um, play a different deck in Malmö. He played um, Magnezone, <laughs> straight Magnezone, uh, which is a deck which now is pretty much known that it's not so good. Um, people don't really like it that much. It was really popular at like the first uh, two championships. So in where was I think uh, Collinsville and Malmö, there were a lot of metal decks and almost none of them, um, and almost none of them made it uh, into the top cut. And now Ryan seemed either also realized or he just thinks this is a better deck. Um, switched now to Lycan Rock. So Thomas is playing. Um, ah, he's playing Zygarde actually. We got yeah, the, we got the from wrong a different, list. We got from a different from Thomas a different from Thomas. Czech Republic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are very sorry for this. Um, yeah, we will see the correct one soon enough. But I'm kind of happy that we have one round without Zorak. <laughs> and especially Zorak Goliath support. It, it seems to be what? Well, the Mesha and. Well, it look, always looks like a top of, uh, uh, well, all the good players decided that this is the play. So let's see how this is going to work out. Yeah, and now we have the correct Thomas. He does play um, that's what Garbodon. So yeah, it, it looks like it's the same <laughs> Yeah, I was list. just saying, it's, it's, the exact, it's not just the same Pokemon, it's the exact same printout from uh, Andre. <laughs> So <laughs> they just printed the same deck list and wrote a different name on it. Uh, so we have the <laughs> same deck again. We can keep this in mind to have 60 card mirror, mirror match, maybe later in the game. Um, but yeah, so these decks are quite similar because they both use Burswell, but the way they do things is really different. So they both play um, Strong Energy and uh, Max Elixir engine. So with Max Elixir, they can get energy on the Burswell with Jet Bunch, do some damage here and there, and then um, of course this strong Knuckle Impact uh, attack, which deals 160. Not so much, if you think about it. For three energies, you can take the knockout with most mm. Pokemon, but you have strong energy, then, um, which I did wrong last time, <laughs> um, the Garbodor versions almost always only play Fighting Fury Bells, because it yep. makes your Pokemon uh, harder to knock out. It makes it more painful for your opponent to play it, um, a field blower for not a Garbodor, for example. Um, and in the deck which uses um, Lycan Rock together with Zorak, you almost always only see um, Choice Band. Which is clear because you want to deal a lot of damage and put high pressure on your opponent. Yeah, and also you have the uh, Lycan Rock, which is an evolved Pokemon, and the Jack attack from Lycan Rock is quite nice. Uh, it is 50 for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, so if they have three bench Pokemon with a strong, with a um, choice band, you can deal 200 damage, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's insane. <laughs> um, yeah, so Ryan's first turn is looking really good. 
He has a, a Remorite in play, he also has a uh, Rockruff in play, he plays a Promo one, not the one with Corner, which is also something a lot of players aren't entirely sure. I personally like the Promo one the most, it can deal damage, and Corner in a game where most decks play either 3 or 4 Guzmas isn't the win option in most <laughs> situations anyway. It used to be quite different in the past without Guzma uh, in the format, Corner would probably have a lot, would be more versatile to use, but here uh, not so much. So uh, Ryan was also able to get uh, strong energy on yep. his bus wall. Now it's Thomas' turn. He started uh, Zygarde. He can use land poles for um, 40 actually because there is a stadium in play. And then with the strong Plus. energy, take the knockout on Remoride. So Ryan won't get Octillery as fast as he wants to, but he plays 2 2. So getting this knocked out here is quite fine. Also, Thomas plays Max Elixir, gets the energy in play, so everything is looking. Quite nice for both players. Ryan can, in theory, evolve his uh, Rock Ruff, and if he has enough strong energy, he could take the knockout on the Trubbish. But in a Zorak like in Buzzball like in Rock, while you have a lot of abilities which are also quite useful, um, it's not that important, I would say. Uh, and also, if your opponent plays Buzzball. Maybe getting damage on this wall earlier is more important, but I've never played that matchup, to be honest, so we will see on the spot what we, we can could learn say. how it's Yeah, working. we can learn now. We can <laughs> learn together with you. And the people in the chat who already know the answers can laugh, so we have uh, learning and fun at the same stream. Perfect. Um, Ryan grabs um, Pseudo Voodoo. He has Brooklyn Hill in play, which is a really cool card. I like it. Yeah. And for some reason, grabs Water Pokemon as well. So um, no, I you can you can get Remorite as well. So in Boss Wall Lightning Rock, it's it's th this tip better uh, because if you have no supporter in hand, you have Brooklyn Hill and Octoly or Ultra Ball. Yeah, you can also um, get some cards here. And yeah, like yeah. I like I thought, he might want to take the knockout on Trubbish, put thirty on Boss Wall. And now applying a lot of pressure and Thomas, it's quite unlikely to be able to <laughs> to be able to take the knockout here. Uh, there was some kid <laughs> going backstage. I was like looking at me, am I allowed to be here? And I was like, no, no, you're not. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's why we were laughing. So uh, back to the game. Thomas has Zygarde in his active position, and he is also uh, he's going to use. Ryan's Brooklyn Hill, obviously, as all stadium cards, they apply to both players. And uh, as Thomas is, of, of course, playing fighting Pokemon in his deck, it will also be quite useful for him. Yeah, this is uh, Brooklyn Hill. It's usually a card you only play in um, Lycanroc. Um, but what well, it not in the Garbodor version, it can grab Trubbish, and the Garbodor plays it differently like you don't have to get um, a lot of bench pokemon each turn um, and not so fast so it's not that important to get it but if you play in this matchup especially your opponent can just yep. um, get it for you um, he plays the parallel city which is also quite cool in theory you can attack with the boss wall for example just deal 30 30 if it gets damaged floatstone retreat you have to play four floatstone anyways so you have quite a lot of them yeah, and the cool thing with Parallel City is that it works out uh, in a lot of good matchups and you can use it in different ways. You could use it to limit the bench size of your opponent, which makes the damage output of Zorak DX smaller, or you could also use the opposite side and, for example, um, reduce the damage output of Grass Pokemon as, uh, for example, Glycopod DX. Yeah, and in that previous round we had, um, this other side put in a lot of work in the game it didn't it didn't change it necessarily because in the last round not the right card was drawn but um, it has a lot of uses also you can get you can force your opponent to discard an important Pokemon you can limit their bench size before they can play Bridget which is especially painful if they only have Ultra Ball or Tapu Lele in hand and you can also get rid of your Pokemon with damage and Thomas uh, he got a Max Elixir played Sycamore but it looks like he didn't get an energy afterwards which is really sad to say the least um, yes. he does have nine fighting four strong which is like the like the golden ratio f almost with evil tiled garbodor decks we also have the same four double colors energy card nine basics 
um, in Basel, um, Garbodo, I've, o I've never seen anything else, I think, or oh, I didn't look at the numbers <laughs> good <laughs> enough. And also for Ryan, he plays 9-4, all the lists I ever played against only played 9-4, um, so either it's the way to go or people didn't figure out the better way. <laughs> but of course, 9 uh, just... Like this is not a mathematically proven thing, which is better. But you want to, you don't want to play too many energy cards. And thirteen energy is also a, quite a common number, just in general yeah. for um, for all kind of decks, which you've seen through the whole game. And Thomas taking a lot of time in his turn. Uh, he needs to go <laughs> through a lot of things. Uh, he doesn't want either of his Pokemon to be knocked out. Yeah, there are uh, a lot but of. But he also doesn't want to sacrifice anything. Yeah, there are a lot of things that can add damage in his deck. Uh, I think he is also playing a... No, he's not playing Regirock, but... Yeah, yeah Thomas doesn't play Regirock oh, because obviously, of Garbodor, yeah. But Ryan is also not... He, he only plays not, one Regirock. He, yeah. I mean, I say only now because I always test it with the list which plays two Regirock, and I really <laughs> like two Regirock, but one Regirock is a standard. So I take the only away. <laughs> yeah, but I think in this uh, in this very matchup, there are a lot of things that can add damage. So you don't on only have to calculate the the damage of the attacks. You also have to take the tool cards into account. Uh, Reggie Rock, for example, if there's a stadium card in play and the special energy card, so it can be quite difficult. To yeah, and the one thing Thomas took a lot of time to think about was where do I attach the Fighting Fury Bird. Yeah. He could have attached it active, giving his Zyga 230 HP, which is a lot. But given that there are already two strong energy attached to the active bus wall, a Knuckle Impact would... Uh, knuckle Impact and Absorption already take the one at knockout yeah. anyways. So he could have attached it to the bench bus wall for future plays, um, but he attached it to the Zora... Uh, for <laughs> not not <laughs> Zora! <laughs> for, to the Sudo Budo. Yeah, now everything which kind of has a similar <laughs> letter in it is now Zora <laughs> and um, he just attacks with uh, Lance Pull, 60 damage again Ryan's turn now, he also prepares his um, Sudobudo if you hit a Max Elixir you can get some energy just on it yep. um, Ryan plays... oh this is also again very interesting so on his necklace there is a, it's printed from PTGO and it says one energy switch and he crossed it out and wrote three energy switch. And then he crossed that out and wrote two energy switch. <laughs> um, yeah, energy switch is quite a good card um, in Zorak, in Zorak uh, Lycan Rock. And if you, especially with the Sudobudo, if you just have, if you happen to draw into a um, Max Elixir and you attach it, you have force to attach it to either Buzzwall or Rockruff or even a Remorite, then you can switch it onto Sudobudo. Or if you have like, uh, or if you do the same thing, attach an energy to Buzzwall, and then the same turn you need to attack with Jetshot, but need a strong energy. You can move the one from the active to the bench, and this is why mm -hmm. most people play Energy Switch instead of Multi Switch, which is also a card which is uh, quite popular. So Ryan has in his hand, he does have the Lightning Rock, so he can evolve and grab either the opponent's Buzzwall or the Trubbish. So. I'm not entirely sure if Ryan has an energy for either Knuckle Impact or Absorption. I would imagine if he uses now, um, if he can take the knockout, the knockout on Zygarde would be quite nice. Um, yeah, but if he doesn't have the energy, ouch, maybe Trubbish uh, is the better choice here. And we see Lycanroc uh, evolving and using Bloodthirsty Eyes, but it looks like Ryan isn't that sure what to get in the active spot. Uh, what do you think would be better? He has a lot of options. I don't, want to th I don't want to say what I think because it would yeah. be wrong. <laughs> but I would say he will choose a Pokemon. <laughs> um, yeah, so he took the Trouble similar to last turn. Um, he still needs, he wants to have his access to his abilities. Yeah. Um, he can, because the Brock Little is still in play, at some point he can uh, set up the Remoride, or that's what he thinks, because we have a prize cam and we see Remoride is actually in his prize cards, and it's also the last prize card he will draw. So taking the Trubbish out here won't be too much, of course, Bloodthirsty Eyes, great ability, um, is now not being blocked. He put the 30 on Sudobudo actually, um, because Sudobudo in this matchup can deal 160, because you copy absorb either Absorption or, or better uh, Knuckle Impact. And with, 10. 
and with strong energy exactly plus fighting fury belt that can stack up quite quickly and now Thomas turn again he just and plays N so putting Ryan down to four he himself draws the six um, yeah, and Ryan still hasn't has a auxiliary. Uh, uh, of course, we know why that is, but that makes these uh, late game ends or well later game ends. The epic end yeah. comebacks, yeah. as they say, <laughs> um, possible. Yeah. So right now the end is just a kind of fair card. If you remember the card Shauna, some people <laughs> played it in some decks, and this card said, "Draw your hand to your deck, draw five. Now it's the same for Ryan Kaina. It's kind of like he played Shauna. <laughs> um, because he draws four and then for his turn, the fifth card. So he starts his turn with five. That's still fine in most situations. Yeah, it's decent. Um, and Thomas attacks a strong energy. Oh uh, no, the bench Zygarde is the one which uh, was active earlier. Um, now he has a carbink. Broglit Hill is also interesting because you can either use it before N or after N. If you use it before, your deck is thinner. So if you just want, for example, uh, carving on my bench would be cool. You use Brooklyn Hill first, search your deck, put it on your bench, and then you can't draw it. So it's one card more for mm. the end in this situation. But if you think, well, if I draw that Pokemon, I would search for something else. Then sometimes you would uh, want to play the end first and then use Brooklyn Hill. This always depends on the situation. Um, Thomas now going for Absorption GX. Um, yeah, we already talked about this. If you use Knuckle Impact, you can't attack next turn. So most of the time you just use Absorption first. And if you play Garbodor, you don't have another GX attack. So the moment Absorption would get worse than uh, Knuckle Impact after the knockout. So in this situation here, it's usually better to use the GX attack. Also, if Ryan wants to copy it now, it would do the same amount of damage, but he would use his Jax attack for it. And Dangerous Rogue is still a very strong attack. It is. Um, now there are three Pokemon on the bench, so that's 150 damage. Plus, you know, Fighting Fury Belt, Regirock, Choice Band. There is a lot of ways um, to get more damage. Now Ryan really needs to get energy in play. It's we, we said last turn he didn't have an energy in his hand. But that's really important in this deck because you have to attach an energy from your hands ideally every turn and then you occasionally you attach one from your deck with a max elixir getting a max elixir not is is still something you can deal with um, it's a great card of course if you get it but it's not too bad if you don't get it but if you neither attach energy from your hand nor from your deck then you're in a very problematic spot and here we see the talked about max elixir this he time hit it hit for ryan so if he attaches it to Sudowoodo and he gets an energy from his hand, he can use Absorption which would deal 160 damage, but that's still not enough. Unfortunately, I don't know which tool is attached to Sudowoodo. It looks like it's a choice band. Well, we will just well, to act Ryan like we don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, that's what I was talking about. Um, so let's see, does he get an energy? Yeah. Because he would need a strong energy either way. He gets 160 with absorption. There is a fighting fury belt active, which means um, if he gets 180, it's still 10 damage left. Uh, that's still 10 HP left for a burst wall. Um, of course, he has rage rock in play. So what I was just said is actually not correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, keep your oh, abilities David. in mind. <laughs> it's very good that I'm not playing in this tournament. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so if he has an energy, he can take the knockout with Sudowoodo, but it seems like he didn't have one. Um, we, will, we will see it later as well. So he just uses Brooklet here again. He didn't play Brooklet before the Sycamore, but afterwards. Maybe because he drew um, it. Yes. He drew it. Yes, he drew it. <laughs> there was a Parasite in play. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's quite a good reason to play it after the Sycamore. And now, if he has the energy, he, he can attack, but he didn't attach it. He looks at the opponent's discard fire. Yeah, it looks like he hasn't drawn an energy card. And, uh, well, Ryan is really struggling to power up his Pokemon in this game. Yeah, this doesn't look good at all. Um, especially now, Thomas might just use a Jet Punch to get some damage in play. Yeah. If he uses Knuckle Impact, then Ryan can copy that again. Um, for the easy knockout, 
but if Thomas just attacks with Jet Punch or maybe plays a Guzma and attack with Land Draw, um, that would limit the force yeah. of uh, Sudovudu. And Ryan doesn't really have anything going for him. It's really unlikely for him to take the one at knockout next turn. Um, Parallel City again. Let's see what Ryan is going to discard here. Um, yeah, he's going for. Well, he's considering to go for the buff wall. Uh, he might not want to discard the Regirock because he needs this extra 10 damage. Yeah, all yeah. of his Pokemon are still quite useful. So he doesn't, of course, he doesn't want to discard the Sudovudu. The Lycan Rock still with an energy switch can use his dangerous Rock GX to finally take a knockout um, on a buzz wall. Yeah. And the Regirock makes you deal 10 more damage. Uh, yeah, which again, like often said, is important and yeah, should not be forgotten. <laughs> um, I was just seeing there is no field lower in oh, Ryan's yes. deck. Interesting. Um, yeah, so a lot of this might also be one of the reasons why he's so aggressively taking down, uh, took down past tense from to take um, <laughs> down the um, troubles. Because he has no way to get rid of the Gobbler once it's in play, he has to take a one at knockout. Yeah. 100 damage is really weird, so it would become quite complicated. But it also means there is no way for him to get rid of a Fighting Fury Belt. <laughs> and right now, Dangerous Rogue would also deal 160 damage with the Red Rock this time. Yeah, and he's um, also stuck with the Parallel City. Uh, he is playing three Brickle Tails, so he could play a Counter Stadium again. But as we can see, his Brickle Tail is prized. But it's going to be the next prize he's drawing into. Yeah, Brooklyn, he has already all of them. All of, all of them are gone now, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, Thomas, is this the talked about jetpack? Yes, it is. Uh, so, like I said, <laughs> this time it's actually correct what I said. Um, he just uses jet punch, so to limit his risk. And also, he didn't put down any bench Pokemon. So now it's quite quite unlikely for Ryan to get the knockout on the boss wall, but it's still possible. If he has choice band, strong energy and energy switch, he can take the knockout. That's a lot of it's a lot to ask for, especially without an artillery in play. But uh, he might get it. Yeah, let's see. Um, have you seen Ryan's hat? We, we, uh, all I can see is a Guzma. Yeah, all I can energy see a I see actually an energy switch, so what does he do? Ugh. Oh, he's playing Guzma, Guzmaing his opponent's Sudowoodoo. <laughs> jet Punch. Oh. Watch out, learn Jet Punch. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is, these are these weird situations where you're sometimes uh, thrown in. And does he put 30? Where does he put it? Um, if he puts it on the bus wall, it might be a bit telling. If um, you use Watch and Learn on your opponent's Watch and Learn, you do Jet Punch, right? In this very situation? I don't think so. I think you use watch and learn, and then nothing happens. But I actually don't know. <laughs> oh, this is something. <laughs> uh, this is something. I'm. I'm pretty sure nothing happens. Maybe someone, some smart person in the chat can actually look that up. Um, I thought I was sitting next to the right person to ask these kind of questions. But these these are the things that I as a, like as a judge. You just use the um, you 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 would use your smartphone in this situation and look it up. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> um, Thomas playing... Oh... Guzma! He plays Layla on his bench, so one extra bench Pokemon. Um, yeah, so someone in the chat told us that probably nothing happens, so uh, we will stick with this. Um, he played Tapu Layla GX to search his deck for Guzma. And now the Sudafuru again will not be knocked out. Um, really, yeah. <laughs> really interesting game. He's really holding and, on to this. But now he Sudafuru. takes the knockout because now this 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 turn is a bit different because of the Zygarde on the bench. He can deal 140 damage, and he only has one prize card left. So if Ryan attacks with Sudafuru now, Thomas wins. If Ryan plays um, Guzma to take the knockout on the Zygarde, the Knuckle Impact gets reset. So. Thomas wins again. Looks kind of like a locked. Yeah, it's always checkmate. Yeah, Ryan just retreats and here we see the Guzma. 
um, knockout on either the Rockruff or the Wobbuffet. No, that's not Wobbuffet, that's Voodoo Voodoo. <laughs> yeah, like I already said, the name, Pokemon names, uh, I have to know so many names. <laughs> uh, I get confused sometimes. So, so Rua is sometimes uh, Voodoo Voodoo and apparently Wobbuffet as well. Yeah, I mean, if Voodoo Voodoo can pretend to be Wood, why not pretending to be Wobbuffet? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good uh, explanation for it. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, so this game was quite... It was, it was quite a typical game for both of these decks, I think. Uh, so Lycanroc, these situations sometimes happen where you don't get your yeah. energy and you have these weird decisions where you don't really want to do this, a certain play, um, but you have to. I think Ryan did the best out of his situations. Mm. He missed two hand attachments. Yeah. In Malmö, I think uh, you guys counted how many Mix Elixir missed. Yeah. But for Ryan, mm -hmm. I think he, he hit more Mix Elixirs. Then he touch energy from his <laughs> hand. Uh, it, at least it feels this way. Yeah, that um, it, it was crazy because both both decks don't really have energy acceleration. Yeah. Uh, beside carving, the elixir yeah, and the carving, but we didn't really see carving in this game. So if you miss the energy attachment from your hand, you're automatically left behind your opponent. Oh, I don't want to be left behind. So <laughs> getting the energies is really important. Yeah. Um, like we, I mean, of course it's a fort lift. With other energies, you can't attack. But in these decks, it's a bit more important than in other decks. Like for example, Golisopod Zorak, they need one energy attack, and that's it. And they have traits; they they can't move anyway. <laughs> um, so now with these three energy costs, always, it's a bit different. And let's see if they think about the price cam. Oh, it um, looks like Ryan did not think about the price cam, but Thomas, Thomas did. did. Nice, yes. yeah, he remembered Ryan. It was, I think, every <laughs> round one of them did it, and uh, one didn't. So, yeah, let's see what they start with. Here we see the handshake. Half of the time is already gone, and Ryan this time starts with carving. Oh no, Ryan starts, Ryan starts yeah, with carving. Ryan starts with carving, and Thomas with. Uh, Car no, ah, <laughs> now you confused well. me. <laughs> I am sorry. Um, the British person has the muscular <laughs> Pokemon <laughs> in his active position <laughs> to avoid using names altogether. We should just not use names anymore. Can you screen. make them gender neutral as well? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I can, I can. The British person has the uh, muscular Pokemon in his active spot. <laughs> um, all right, so Ryan opens with an Ultra Ball. Um, I think a Remoride is usually the first thing you grab, unless your hand is quite weird. Um, you can grab your Tapu Lele GX. Um, Thomas plays two of them, which is... Yeah, not... No. <laughs> Thomas <laughs> plays two, Ryan plays one. Yes. You, you, you only play one in the deck because you have um, Brooklet Hill, and you don't really have so much bench space often. Having Brookhill and Octillery is also nice anyways, but in Thomas' deck you don't have Octillery and you often have um, a turn where your opponent either knocked out your Garbodor or discarded a tool, so you can make better use of the Tapu Lele GX. But both players don't really want to have too many Lele GX as well because you have no double colors energy cards, so it can't really attack. Of course it can attack and we also saw it attack, but it's harder. And yeah. speaking of an attacking Tapu Lele, Ryan just attached uh, Max Elixir energy to it and used energy switch, wow! Wow! So now used energy switch, um, this time it would have been the same as multi switch as well. But of course, um, having a Lele with an energy in play, it's also quite nice. You can have it active for like one turn, where it can sponge, make one attack, and then you retreat it. It only has one retreat, which is quite nice. Remorite and. Rockruff are the other Pokemon which has only one retreat, but this doesn't stay the way because they evolve into Pokemon which has more retreats. So Leela in play with one energy can maybe be used to just retreat. This We won't see this happening too much because um, three floats don't fall, Guzma. That's not a situation you uh, you find yourself in very often mm -hmm. that you have to promote something to then manually retreat it. Um, yeah, but it's just something you should keep in mind that it could be useful and it's not the worst play to attach an energy to a Tapu Lele GX. But uh, it's Thomas' turn again. Um, he has Yeah, Ryan carbing. did manage to find a Remorite 
and Rockruff. Yes. So he is able to, in theory, evolve them next turn. And maybe this time we will actually see an artillery. Ooh. Thomas just decided to be play Professor Sycamore, discarding his whole hand. Uh, I saw another Sycamore. Yeah, he uh, had a Tapulele energy, in hand. Tapulele. So he could have grabbed another supporter, yeah. but... Yeah, because he started with carving, probably um, just discarding a fighting energy isn't really too hurtful. You can use carving break attack, which name I don't know at the moment, um, <laughs> later to attach two energies to the bench again. Um, he did have an energy in his hand now, so he can yep. attach it somewhere. Um, he might think about attaching it to... Uh, to Sudowoodo? Sudowoodo, exactly. <laughs> because the current break only needs one energy, so you don't really need to set anything up. I don't really see him stone edging if he has any other option. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah, so now he probably thinks Ryan will just use uh, Jet Punch anyways. But because of the stadium in play, Ryan's setup is also kind of limited. Here we see him uh, using an Ultra Ball. The only Pokemon he could actually play down now would be a Lycanroc. And then he can either use the ability or not, or he grabs a Pokemon and has the Brooklytale in his hand as well. Yeah, uh, we don't know this. He yet. has the artillery in play now, so he's safe for late game ends. And obviously, it's a great possibility to just play down your hand to a low size and then use artilleries. Uh, a yeah, so right, a bustle hand, a bustle hand, yes, <laughs> a bustle hand. This name I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, he played Ultra Ball, didn't search his deck for anything because he couldn't play down bench Pokemon and he would have wasted his Lycan Rock. Um, but of course, he played the Ultra Ball to draw more cards with his Abyssal Hand now. Seems like he did get an N. It was quite telling that Thomas' hand isn't that great and with the option to draw four cards now, um, not playing the N first, was definitely quite good. And now yeah. um, he did play the N in the end. Now maybe Thomas' hand is a bit better. Uh, we will see this. Later, but this situation right now, as long as Ryan actually draws an energy card this time, um, is really good. I think uh, he can get some damage. Yeah. Thomas board, like this, isn't really a matchup where you would set up your board state and you more just put down from your hand. Um, so it's, even though his board doesn't look that great, it's still something you can work with. And we see a strong energy to elixir. <laughs> whoa, whoa! These are a lot of cards. Um, now he has to think, does he play Strong the elixir energy. now? Does he play two elixir now? He has the option. Looks like he doesn't want to. Um, oh, we see one, one of it. them going down. And he hit it. Actually getting an energy, attaching it to Rockruff. So now he has always the threat um, of Dangerous Rogue GX uh, coming down from Lycan Rock GX as well. Yeah. And this is also something which you always have to keep in mind. That your bench size is also kind of limited by the opponent's GX attack. As I said before, in this very matchup, there are a lot of things you have to keep in mind and a lot of things that can vary the damage output. So, uh, yeah, this little rock rock with the, the energy attached to can become into a very dangerous attacker in <laughs> just a few minutes. Yeah, it even as dangerous in its day. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Ultra Ball discarding a Guzma. Mm, he will probably. He can either grab Trubbish or um, Buzzwall here. Or Carving Break. Looks like he's or considering. Or Tapulele or Carving Break. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many cards. Uh, he does go for Carving Break. I think he has another Pokemon in his hand to attach the energies to. Oh, we see Trubbish. He has a Fighting Fury Belt attached to his. Sudoguru. And he has a Cynthia. Yeah. Yeah, so he, his plan is probably just to get an energy and then he can either, he can attach one to his Sudoguru, mm -hmm. which would be fine. But if he draws into a boss wall now, that would be good. And yeah. in this kind of situation, if he grabs the boss wall first, his chances of drawing the carving are less than grabbing the carving first and then drawing the boss wall afterwards. And he can also draw a Zygarde to make a good use out of it. So um, in this order, it, looks like it makes he hasn't more drawn sense. An energy. Or am I missing something? No, you're not no. missing something. 
Uh, there is no energy in his hand. So That's very unfortunate. Kind of sad. He got the other Pokemon. No energy though. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. That's Pokemon. <laughs> nice. Uh, this yeah looks now very similar to Ryan's game. Earlier he puts Buzzball on the bench. He also got two Elixir. Ah, uh, and he hit it. Yeah, but he cannot retreat as far as I, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it, uh, Carbink has one retreat. Uh, re the retreat costs of one energy, and uh, as he hasn't drawn one, he cannot retreat. Yeah. Um, yeah, but if he would have drawn one. You would have attacked, of course, with yeah, the carving, obviously. right? Which we still don't have a scan of. We are working on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the drowns take so much time. It's insane. Um, yeah, so he just passes without attacking. Now Ryan again. Now he plays the second one, which he had in his hand the last turn as well. But this time, he might think about evolving his Rockruff, actually. Yeah. Uh, so he can grab the opponent's bus wall, which has two energy attached to it now. And then if he has he has an energy in his hand, which is quite nice. <laughs> so he can use absorption or knuckle impact. Yeah, it, it's quite funny to see that Thomas managed to power up his bus wall even without carbing breaks attack. I mean he, Yeah, now he uses yeah. uh Bristle Hand first. God is strong, not really what he wants to see. He does have a sycamore it's now for <laughs> Seven cards, he needs either an Ultra Ball or just the... Yeah, and he decides rock. to go for it. So, Ultra Ball, Ultra here it Ball. is. So, there's no Lycan Rock Crust, which means... He oh, and he also drew into a Brooklet Hill. So, he could use Brooklet Hill as so-called Kick Gym. And, uh, yeah. But it, it only grabs basic Pokemon, right? Yeah, it, it gets yeah. basic Pokemon and put them directly on the bench, but it's still yeah. one... A thing you would kind of like want to do here. He can get either Sudowoodo or Regirock. If he wants to use Knuckle Impact, he would need Regirock actually. Um, because it's not so easy for Ryan to decide on the GX attack. Um, he might watch and learn for a GX attack. He might use um, Lycan Rock, GX, Dangerous Rogue. Um, so Ryan has more options to use in GX attack than Thomas has. So yeah. maybe he wants to save it for now. Um, if he wants to save it, of course, then he the um, Brooklytill is quite important, so he can get the Red Rock for the knockout. And we see Brooklytill. He grabs the stake. And there yes, it is. I am actually correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so now he can deal 190 damage, get the knockout on opponents, boss wall, without, I would say this in uh, quotes, wasting his GX attack, uh, because then he can still dangerous rogue later in the game. And that's what we are going to see. We see bloodthirsty eyes from like from Lycan Rock, putting boss wall in the active position and then KOing it with knuckle impact. All right, and now Thomas, he can also use knuckle impact. Um, with his Sudowoodo, which would not deal enough for the knockout um, as long as he doesn't get a strong energy. We know he doesn't have the energy in his hand from his last turn, uh, so we would need to draw. He took oh, the Hex Professor Sycamore, and he had no supporter in his hand. Um, yeah, quite good for Thomas. He took the risk. I think if he hadn't drawn the supporter there, he could have also just packed his things to maybe win game three. Now he uses Brooklet Hill for uh, Buzzwell, Buzzwell, Rainbow Rare. I don't like Rainbow Rare because it's so hard to see on stream. Yeah, they all yeah. look the same. <laughs> you can only see if something is an Ultra Beast or not because the GX bar is uh, looks a bit different and they have this, like, you can only see if it's an Ultra Beast or not. Yeah, you act, uh, the only thing you can do is check on the deck list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, now Thomas is kind of planning, thinking w what he wants to do, what he can do. And we see Professor Sycamore. Sycamore. So he had Zygarde in his hand, he was thinking, do I put this down or not? But because Ryan didn't use uh, Absorption, um, he has still the Dangerous Rogue option in play. And Thomas got the strong energy, so now he can also Knuckle Impact. Uh, for the knockout. And he has the float stone, putting it on his Garbodor, activating the Gabby Toxin ability. Uh, yeah, that's also 
quite quite an important thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, actually, claw slash from Lycan Rock is also a possibility here, and it would take the knockout on the uh, Sudobudo here. And Brian attached another energy, not a strong energy, which is good because now he actually wants to save it. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, and he can take the knockout on Garbodor. In theory, he could also play Guzma and take the knockout on uh, on Garbodor. No, I mean he can take the knockout on Sudobudo. <laughs> But in theory, he could take the knockout on Garbodor, which wouldn't really make a lot of sense here because then the Sudovudo is still a threat, and there are different like there are different kind of ways to win. You can just grab some prize cards from the band, which is something, for example, Night March did very yeah. often. Like if you let your opponent's active Pokemon in play, Night March didn't really care that much because every Pokemon can knock out a Joltik, right? But uh, so you can each turn just grab something from the bench. Then uh, sometimes you just want to get rid of the threat, even though it doesn't put you uh, in a big advantage in prize cards. Your opponent can't attack right now, so this is the kind of situation Ryan is in here. Yeah, sometimes um, you just don't uh, should not play too greedy and think a little bit advanced. And you know, if you if you are in a better spot at the very end of the game, that's everything that ma really matters. Yeah, not not saying that. <laughs> Taking the knockout on Gavda would have been a great play, but just something uh, yeah. to keep in mind. Now Thomas also uses Brooker Till. It's a really versatile card, even in car even in decks that don't play um, any water or fighting Pokemon, because if your opponent uses it, is, you can check your prize cards <laughs> <laughs> just to be sure. <laughs> and also, if you play um, like Puzzle of Time, for example, you can like look at your deck and then shuffle if all three cards are bad. Um, so it's always yeah. a card your opponent can use in no matter the deck. Also, Thomas didn't grab anything. Um, he won't be able to knock out the Lycan Rock this turn, so he's kind of afraid of a dangerous rogue. Um, there's almost no way that Ryan can get a Knuckle Impact while not being impossible. Oh, oh. that was close. I almost thought it failed. It was the last card. <laughs> it wasn't like you couldn't yeah. see it at the five first, uh, first five. And yeah, we see him attaching it to the Buzzwool, uh, which means he uh, Thomas is able to attack this turn. Uh, he might still go for Carbink Breaks attack and uh, yeah, recycling some energies. Yeah, he can attach two strong energies as well. Yeah. Um, also getting 20 damage, so then the Lightning only has 180 HP. So. I didn't pay too much attention on how many strong energies are in Thomas Discus pile, but even if he only attaches one strong and one basic energy, it would still be fine to get the absorption or a knuckle impact knockout next turn. Um, yeah, but the car bank will probably get knocked out. Um, because if Ryan plays uh, Guzma, he couldn't take the knockout on Buswell if I didn't do anything wrong so mm -hmm. dangerous rock actually now deals less damage than claw swipe claw swipe right now 120 damage with a strong with a um, choice band that's 180 if i'm not mistaken that's <laughs> a, it's not, not 190 so um, yeah. the bus wall is quite safe here so ryan kind of probably just wants to take the knockout on carving and prepare his board to be ready um, for an opponent's um, Plus one. Next turn. <laughs> yeah, uh, so many names I have to keep all of them in mind. It's crazy. Um, yeah, so Ryan used uh, Brooklyn Hill, didn't get anything. Now he's shuffling. And like I said, it's a strong card to just use without grabbing anything, but it's also a problem because it takes your timer down. And this might be quite annoying. So Ryan preparing, <coughs> like I said, for uh, next turn's Knuckle Impact. If he has energy elixir, max elixir. <laughs> if he has max elixir, that would be perfect. Um, but also taking the two-hit knockout with jet punch might be might be fine. Um, but because Thomas still has four prize cards in play, the absorption also deals 180 at the moment, so it's mm -hmm. also enough to take the knockout, which means that Ryan can't really two it knock out the bus wall because then Thomas just takes the one it knockout on the next Pokemon uh, which goes active from Ryan so really problematic situation 
and he even has the fighting fury belt, which we are like we already said, can be um, very useful. Can, can be taken out yeah. by oh, Ryan yeah. because he doesn't play the field blower. Field blower. <laughs> and um, Thomas also top deck the Sigmar this turn <laughs> again. Um, yeah, so getting quite lucky this game. Um, Sometimes that's just what you need. So, so now, actually, his bench is free. Um, he will take the knockout on Lycanroc, he knows this. So he can put as many Pokemon on his bench as he wants. He can use Ultra Ball or save the Ultra Ball, actually. Um, Nest Ball. That's a card we I haven't seen for a while. Uh, it puts a Pokemon directly, a basic Pokemon directly on your bench. But uh, again, as for his Purple Chill Surge, he's not grabbing anything. Probably just wanted to get rid of Nest Ball in his hand. Yeah, the Ultra Ball still might be an option. So usually you kind of want to have your extra Ultra Ball for all the Tapu Lele play, but Gabador is in play, so this probably won't be the case. He still keeps the Ultra Ball. Maybe there was, maybe all of the other cards were very important. Otherwise he could have played Ultra Ball, discarded Nest Ball. Yeah, if you are and not he, he that familiar with the play, uh, with the game, uh, Tapu Lele's ability only activates if you put it from your hand to your bench, so you can't use Nest Ball to use uh, Tapu Lele's ability. And of course, there is a Garbodor in play. So. Yeah, so it seems like Thomas' hand cards were really important for him because he could have also just used Ultra Ball, discard the Nest Ball, and then another card, which is not important. Mm. Um, so we as viewer kind of know. Well, his hand seems to be really strong, because otherwise he could have just gotten rid of more cards to prepare for the end. Um, which is usually something you want to do, like he played Nest Ball, but he didn't search for anything. Which means, um, yeah. just, he just wants to thin out, get rid of his cards that he doesn't want to draw after an end now. Um, because if Ryan actually gets the knockout here, which like we said is quite uh, unfortunate, uh, unlikely, but he can, if he gets a strong energy, and hits the Max Elixir, he can actually take the knockout. So this is something Thomas can prepare for, and if that happens, and Ryan also plays N, um, Thomas wants to be prepared. But Ryan attached ah, basic fighting energy from the hand, so um, he plays N. He the N. Yeah, he can't um, attack with Knuckle Impact, uh, with Jet Punch, I mean now, but he has the uh, Octillery active, so if the Octillery gets knocked out, nothing really happens. Um, it's called seven prize game where your opponent only needs to take like a knockout on two GX Pokemon to win, but sometimes he's forced to knock out a non GX Pokemon. Um, but because of this, also I'm not sure how many Floatstones are already gone for Ryan. Um, Thomas will just use Jet Punch next turn, 60 on the active and 30 on the Ghost Wall. Um, so Ryan then needs to draw either a Guzma or Floatstone. Yep. Um, so let's see if Thomas actually does get the Guzma. He didn't put it down, so it seems like he doesn't got it. No, he didn't get it. Yeah, but maybe Ryan also just wants to set that one out. Having Octillery in the active position, and well, it he doesn't really mind if Octillery gets knocked out, so he can he can have it in the active spot until his. Buzz wall is fully powered up. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, like for Ryan, if he puts anything but the artillery active, um, Thomas gives 190 right now with Knuckle Impact. Use Absorption last turn, so he can still attack. Yeah. Um, but Thomas doesn't want to take the knockout on artillery now because he would draw one prize card. He, he would need to use Knuckle Impact, and yeah. then Ryan just needs a strong energy to win. But now Ryan needs a strong energy and a Flowstone to win, or any energy and a Guzma. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Thomas kicked the camera, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So both players now, they all have some certain amount, certain cards they need to draw. He, ch he actually takes a knockout. So um, his hand, you could see his hand. He had a. Oh yeah, and the game is over. So what I was wanting to say is, he had a flowstone in his hand and an ultra ball. So he knew to get to win the game next turn, he would need a Guzma. So he took the knockout now, um, because maybe Ryan doesn't have the strong energy. Thomas just played N for two, so Ryan had three hand cards. Not sure how many strong energies were already gone, so he yeah. was just hoping. Um, 
yeah, so he was just hoping maybe there is something in for them. But um, now the t time is running down. They have like one minute left. They know they have a different timer. The time for the other people were already announced. So probably they would just start the game, see if they... Oh, they already shook hands. Oh, yeah, oh, good, fair enough. Then. <laughs> I mean, in theory, you would just play like one game. Maybe one person starts with... Like Thomas can start Trubbish, then Pat twice. And uh, the same for Ryan. Ryan yeah. can just start Remorite and then draw past two turns. Some people like to play it out. But yeah, yeah. Like, it doesn't well, really make it, too much it's sense. mostly just a waste of time yes. because you know how this is going to end. And also, both people yes. know, like, if I lose this way now, <laughs> like, Ryan is, yeah, if I just start Ram Ride and then draw a pass, that's super stupid. And yeah. uh, the same for Thomas, you know, it's like, yeah, if I draw, like, I don't know, start Sugabudo and draw a pass twice, I don't want to lose a game this way. So they just tie because that will 99% happen, anyways. Yeah, and both players are 201, which is, which still let's give that. Well, they are still in a very good position, so there's no point in really hunting for these three points. One point is still good. Yeah, a tie is always annoying, especially in this format. I I think you tie a lot more because games take so long. Everyone uses Brooklyn Hill every single turn, so they shuffle their deck so much, and then trade um, Zorak matchups always take a lot of time. Mm. Uh, so especially mirror matches. Um, yeah, so tying in the current format is probably a bit more hurtful than it used to be. Um, yeah, but still, I'm very looking forward to round four. Yeah, me too. Don't go anywhere.